see here. Um, okay, good. All right. So, so yeah, Ruth, I, I just want to, I know this might sound a little bit redundant, but I just want to go through some of the back, your background again. Um, you know, uh, how long have you been with the company? What's your, I know you're an attorney, but you know, um, how long have you been in this current position? You know, what are your general duties? Things like that. Uh -huh. So I began working at this um, law firm as a law clerk while I was in law school uh -huh. in 2011. I was hired as an associate when I passed the bar in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I am currently the senior associate at the firm. Mm -hmm. My duties include general lawyering. Mm -hmm. So I um, we, we, we do litigation, so mm -hmm. we litigate employment, discrimination, mm -hmm. um, wage and hour claims, class action employment disputes, class action wage and hour claims, mm -hmm. um, and some employment contract negotiation and disputes. We have a boutique sub practice that involves um, litigating, well, actually, let's, let's just strike that. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Um, so I do anything required of me for my cases in that vein. I also assist the managing partner in supervising associates, law clerk, our legal assistant. Do you have a, um, I don't know if this works in, if this is how it works in, in the in a law firm, but do you, ma do you directly manage other associates? Um, um, I actually, so I don't manage the workload of other associates, but I do assist them. Uh -huh. um, like, I don't manage the other associates' um, caseloads, mm -hmm. but I assist and supervise them in their daily tasks if they have questions about how to write a brief, how to respond, mm -hmm. where to locate procedural rules, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I work with my boss in assisting them to achieve those um, basic tasks. Being aware. And are they, are those are those associates not not your? I know you mentioned your boss is somewhere. He's he's also working remotely. I think for the time in yeah, Spain for, or for something. Yeah, for a short period of time. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah. Are those other associates? Are they co-located? I mean, are yeah, they in working? San Francisco. They're in San Francisco. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your you and your um, boss you remotely kind of support them as needed. Yeah, for the moment we do. Um, although my boss is physically in the office quite often. I would say he's there about 50% of the time. Okay. Is he, so, so he's not, a, he's, he's no, just. 100% remote. Okay, I see. So he's, okay. Yeah, he um, flies back. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and then, um, so can I ask that, how, how often are you in contact with, you know, like I, I'm trying to get a sense of how independent is your work or how much it relies on, you know, sort of, I know it's just assist, you're assisting okay. other. Yeah. In the, in it's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual situation. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know most remote workers are probably like, you know, in marketing or PR or something. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a little bit different than, than an attorney. So it's kind of an odd situation, but I'm, I'm in daily contact with my boss for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in daily contact with our legal assistant. Mm -hmm. I'm in near daily contact with associates and law clerks. Mm -hmm. um, there are periods where the contact is daily. If I'm working, if I'm managing someone on a project, um, supervising a document review process, instructing someone on procedures or training them. You know, we have a, an influx right now of new law clerks because um, the summer is coming. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, during like a, a training phase when a new law clerk comes on, they... I would say 90% of the time, they will contact me at least once a day with a question that another associate can't answer. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of my work on substantive legal work, mm -hmm. that is almost entirely independent of um, any any other associates and law clerk. Mm -hmm. um, my boss supervises me. We have some attorneys of counsel. That means there are attorneys who aren't employed by the firm, but who fill in for us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a that's a that's a usual arrangement, even when everyone is on site. Small law firms often have of counsel attorneys. Mm -hmm. So those people sometimes supervise 
me, and I sometimes supervise them. So when I'm working on a project with an up counsel attorney, I'm in daily contact with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and daily contact can mean phone. It can mean FaceTime or Skype. Mm-hmm. It can mean email. Are those the primary tools? Do you use any other um, tools aside from those to communicate? It, Skype, you, the well, mm-hmm. yeah, so video conferencing and phone and FaceTime. So it's mainly those. We also use WebEx, WebEx? Uh-huh. which is like a shared desktop program mm-hmm. so that we can look at each other, each other's work in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say FaceTime is mostly mostly with our legal assistant because for physical filings with the court, she needs me to like actually look at the paper that she's printed out and tell her if it's correct. So she'll like, <laughs> she'll, like FaceTime me in and I'll look at the exhibit tabs and make sure everything is right. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I'm working with another associate or a, or a law clerk, often it's a WebEx format so that we can look at the same document at the same time and mm-hmm. not have to be saying, okay, on page 12, that's a paragraph three. Mm-hmm. Kind of mm-hmm. Um and then, um, so can you sort of describe then, you know, it, how you ended up, you know, you've moved from uh, San Francisco to Connecticut, and I mean, sort of how the remote, and I, I think what you what you said last time was that um, remote work is that they, they may have they've made an exception in your that that it's not the norm, it, it's um, more of an exception. Is that? Is that right? Could you just sort of describe a little bit about, you know, your organization's remote work arrangements and how is it that you sort of ended up working remotely? Absolutely. So I should say, and probably didn't mention this last time because it's sort of more background than probably seemed necessary at the time, but um, my boss does, has in the past allowed attorneys to go abroad um, for short periods of time, like three months, six months. I think one time there was a a year-long arrangement Mm -hmm. where an attorney worked in another country because of a spouse or a partner's work arrangement. Mm -hmm. So somebody somebody got assigned to a six-month project, I believe, in the Swiss Alps one time. Mm -hmm. And so we had an attorney who lived in the Swiss Alps for six months (laughs) and worked remotely. Uh And another time, an attorney just wanted to travel through um, Eastern Europe and, and worked remotely through various countries like in Croatia and I mean all kinds of places so he, he was sort of on the move for about I think it was a year uh-huh. so, yeah. so my boss is, is very flexible mm-hmm. in terms of permitting employees to have kind of unorthodox arrangements this is not a normal arrangement for a firm uh-huh. um, in my case we had had a baby and realized we wanted to be closer to family so we decided to move to Connecticut mm-hmm. and my boss said why don't you he said, I, you know, if you're going to be difficult to replace, why don't you um, work remotely for a little while while you're studying for the Connecticut Bar? Mm-hmm. That way you can keep a paycheck coming in and you don't have a gap in your employment history. Mm-hmm. And that way I have a little cushion in finding a replacement for you. I said, sure. Mm-hmm. And once I passed the bar, we both realized he, he hadn't found anybody that was, he was particularly interested in. And I was, because I have young children, I, at that point I had one child, um, it was very helpful for me to be able to be home. I was nursing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, with, with a preschooler, you know, they have in the area in Connecticut that I'm in, it's very difficult to find a high-quality daycare that is a full-time daycare. Mm-hmm. So starting at age two, kids are often in half-day preschool programs. Nannies are very expensive here, so so me being home allows me to have like a less expensive, less qualified babysitter because I'm right here on the next room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need to have somebody who's you know a career nanny. So so for all of those reasons, I said sure. Why don't I keep working remotely for you? Mm-hmm. Um, I do I do worry a little about the effect it might be having on my career. I'm not physically in front of judges as much as I would be if I were still in San Francisco. But. Um, it, it, is yeah. that is that so? Is your um, I mean, because it, it's it, you, you're involved in. Um, forgive me if I'm not. If this is litigation, how do you deal with that as an attorney? If do you fly? But I mean, or oh, good question. yeah, I, I guess. Or is your is are you covering cases in Connecticut? Is that how it's working? So, so most cases, so most California courts permit appearances by court call. For most matters, as as you may know, most cases don't actually go to trial. Mm-hmm. Something like zero zero one cases, percent of cases go to trial. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if a case that I have 
goes to trial or a full arbitration hearing or something like that, I fly out to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. 